welcome to Cuba. Something I've always wanted to do for a long, long time is come and visit this country. A good friend of mine, Natasha, said, hey, I got uh, a couple of weeks off in August. Do you want to come and join me? So, here I am. Come and join me and Natasha for a tour of Cuba. Okay, we're at Charles de Gaulle Airport, we're leaving for Cuba. This is the first gin and tonic. Hi there. Um, so, as we've been told, we're at Charles de Gaulle. And Andrew's having a gin and tonic, and of course, you know, that's the worst drink possible. It's just because he wants an English passport, that's why he's doing it. Anyway, I'll just have a little drink to um, Mr. Cognac. Thank God, but the camera reminds of what we've been up to and what we've seen and what we're doing. Last time we had drinks and we had a camera, she went up to a policeman with a blowing orange wand and yeah, asked him to... Yeah, wand, baby. Well, let's see, the policeman didn't quite know whether to arrest her or take her home. Yeah. You know, he didn't do either, though. Lost out. There you go. Anyway, um, Andrew, have a really good holiday. Yeah, you too, Pat. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Wow. Now, a bit of history of Cuba for the people who don't know anything about Cuba. 1492, Columbus discovered Cuba. By 1514, the whole island had been conquered by Spain. And in um, 1868, uh, Carlos Manuel, he launched the first rebellion against Spain. 1878, the separatists were defeated after 10 years of war. In 1898, Spain renounced its claim to Cuba and Cuba became under the protection of the United States. And after that, the United States passed through Congress a bill allowing for the independence of Cuba. And that was the first Cuban Republic, 1898. In 1901, the Flat Amendment gave the basic Guantanamo Bay after spending three years in prison, so Castro is released due to a political amnesty and he goes to Mexico to meet up with the Shea. 1956, the Barbudos, which was the guerrilla group, left and returned, or left Mexico and returned to Cuba under the command of Che Guevara and Fidel Castro. <laughs> In 1959, Castro successfully enters Havana and takes over Cuba. Right. 1960, Cuba nationalized all American interests. And the American commercial embargo began. 1961, the Bay of Pigs fiasco. 1989, 1990, the fall of the Berlin Wall, the end of the Soviet Union and the beginning of the decline of the Cuban economy. 1994 was the crisis de, de Balceros, which is the economic crisis after the end of the Soviet Union. One little known fact actually is uh, Che Guevara wasn't even Cuban. He's Argentinian. This is day one in Cuba. We've already ordered the first day's mojitos because it's damn hot and sweaty. Beautiful. Very humid. Pretty cool though, as you'll see in some of the pictures. Okay. 
got some beautiful architecture, some nice buildings, and we're just doing a walk around the old town of uh, Havana, which I didn't realise until we started coming here was actually a UNESCO classified World Heritage Site. Yes, this is true. This is um, some of the best remaining sort of pre-colonial Spanish type architecture in the world, which is right UNESCO World Heritage, and you'll see... It's modern to me, but anyway. Not necessarily this building. Actually, we're sitting in the hotel where oh, no, Ernst Hemingway... Look, isn't that... It's Ernest. It's Ernst Hemingway. <laughs> this is the hotel in which Ernst Hemingway lived in the 1930s and wrote the book, um, For Whom the Bell Tolls. Is that right? That would be right. That would be right. That would be right. That would be Say that again. Oh, we're standing in the um, Piazza de la Cathedral, and uh, behind you have the Cathedral uh, San Cristobal. Well, I have no idea what this is, but it's making a lot of racket coming down the street. of the hanging brochette and I think that you know something to think about if I ever do restaurants again. Maybe it's an idea I can get my brother to set up for restaurants in Australia with his little carpentry skills. I don't know but I'm impressed. Can't be too bad if you can come down to the cafe on a Sunday with your mates, sit under the sun, get a yard of beer poured to you by the waiter, and practice your music. I think Castro is quite clever. He's allowed a big cult of uh, heroism to build up around Che Guevara because Che, of course, died in the late 1960s when he was executed. I don't think he would be that popular if he was alive. Castro wouldn't have allowed a, a competitor, if you like. This is another one of those how the heck did I get here moments. And for years I've been wanting to come to Cuba. And here I am standing on the steps of the Capitol building in Havana. And in comes the afternoon rain. Now this is definitely one of those what I call how the hell did I get here moments. The Hotel National in the background. 
and the Gulf of Mexico in front of Still at the hotel now. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be going places, but well, you are, but you're not physically. But well, we're going. We're going to copy this and have ice cream. Okay. If we can get that. Far. Can't buy my drink. Need another one. Haven't had enough. What are you drinking? Whatever it is, Andrew has had like, now we've been with, we still at the Hotel National. And Andrew's Mulata. drinking that. And I've just returned after spending a half an hour looking for fly spray, amongst other things. And I found Andrew practically rolled up on the couch, drunk, on his second cocktail. So I'm going to drink this disgusting coloured thing to that because, you know, Gotta catch not very up. often we get to see Andrew rolling around the ground out of control. And still holding the camera. Oh, you got a point there. There are the little coconut taxis that we're in. The driver on the left is the guy taking us around. That is Hotel Nacional. We've just broken into the hotel. Libre. We come up to the 25th floor. It's closed, as you can see. It's like totally closed. The hotel is closed, and we're here, and we're getting a view of the room from the 25th floor. It doesn't get any better than this. If there's one country in the world you don't break into places, it's Cuba. So what did we do? And it says, don't go. So what do we do? We're Australian. It's a green light. As, it's an, old, a green light. as an old Brazilian friend of mine once said, you can tell the Australian because they're on the other side of the do not enter sign asking, Say why that not? Was. Why not? There you go. So here we are. <laughs>
Sydney. It's a beautiful day and we're ready for our next step of the adventure. Which we is? a drink in our hand, mind you. <laughs> I would like to say that we have not had a drink yet today. Mind you, it's only 12 to 9 in the morning. But um, that's about all I can say for the moment. Catch up with you later. Okay, we're off. We're off to Maria El Gorda down in the down in the west. We're going to go scuba diving for a couple of days, uh, then to um, Cayo La Vista to sit on the beach, and then we'll see what's there. So now is uh, Maria El Gorda. Okay, so there is a motorbike with sidecar. Now, we tried lots and lots to rent one of those. As it turns out, you've got to be licensed to rent any vehicle to any foreigner. So, we weren't allowed to rent one because everyone was scared the police would confiscate it when they saw a foreigner riding it. So, we were thinking about renting our own cars. But, when you see there are no road signs anywhere, we would have gone got horrifically lost and ended up in orange track suits in Guantanamo Bay, I'm sure. This is the leftovers of the last hurricane that came through two weeks ago. Okay, we're in Pina del Rio on the way down to Maria Gorda. Just having a bit of a think about um, what I thought about Cuba so far. It's really friendly, a lot of people may even smile when they try to rip you off. But people don't rip you off in an unfriendly way like in a lot of other countries. They come up and they say, do you want cigars or shall I show you around or something like this? And you're like, no. And they're like, oh, okay. And they smile. So that's pretty cool. But I get an overwhelming sense that all of that will end when the embargo ends. Anyway. Here's our taxi. We're in the uh, Wanahakabibis Peninsula in the west of Cuba, where we've done some scuba diving and some swimming. This is a 108,000 square kilometer protectorate under UNESCO as a world biosphere. Yeah, what do you got here? There are there are 172 species of birds here, including various numbers of parrots, woodpeckers, and the Cuban national bird, the cocoga, which is all around this area. There are 30 different mammal varieties and 61 different types of reptiles in here. This whole jungle area is coastal mangrove but built on old coral beds that have now receded into the land as you can see here, old dead rocky coral. And there are 600 species of plant life in here including 16 different types of orchid. And it's damn hot and steamy, I tell you, but it's serene, it's quiet, you've got the sound of the birds and the cicadas and the bugs. I love the jungle, nearly as much as I love the desert.
So you can see why UNESCO has declared this a world biosphere, and let's hope it survives the United States taking over Cuba when Castro dies. Cool. Just heading off to Peter's Caves. Peter's Caves is uh, about an 18, 20 metre dive through some little canyons you just go swimming through. Um, nice warm water and some cool coral look at. Okay, we've arrived at Peter's Cave, 18 metres deep, and we're going to be swimming through little tunnels, which will be a lot of fun. Hopefully she comes up. <laughs> Too hard to explain, you know, 
that, that we're friends, that we're and, friends and that we're not you know bonking so you know we want two beds so we just say brother and sister which is embarrassing Shh. for Natasha because uh, keep your voice down everything is booked under Mrs Natasha Hall and Mr Andrew McLeod so she's obviously my sister younger who's already married or divorced and she doesn't like that idea because it makes it hard for her to pick or up married folks. and I've brought my elder toy boy with me trying to make it look kind of you know Psst. something anyway <laughs> we're at Kaya La Vista and we're bored. And Tasha's really bored. Tasha's very, very bored, so we've decided to play a game of backgammon, but we had no backgammon set, so we went and got enough pieces of local fruit to be one colour. But Andrew won't taste it. No, because Tasha's it's poisonous. So I want him to taste it. That's your sister for you. And then we've got enough seashells for the other pieces. We've done a lake you get for dice, but more importantly, we got a fresh coconut, which is open, which has got inside it, fresh coconut milk and rum, of course. There's something different. Oh my God, how much rum is there in I'll one and six? And she's drinking the coconut. Cause one, I catch one. Six. I catch the other. It ain't over, over. It's Tasha's move. But we just had a hermit crab cross over our board, which is kind of funny. Because just before Tasha got her pieces and laid them out, and one of them stood up and walked away. And it turned out the seashell she got actually had a hermit crab fitted on the inside. <laughs> See? <laughs> Andrew, he doesn't like me. Kaya La Vista. <laughs> Kaya La Vista, we're in Kaya La Vista. And what can we say about Kaya La Vista? I think we can say that, okay, the islands are alright, but the weather's it's, good. Weather's good. Um, nothing on the Whit Sundays, I think, in summary. You know, this place offers some white sanded beach, a couple of palm trees, nothing we wouldn't find in Queensland. It's actually uh, nothing you'd find anywhere else in the Carib either. Yeah. It's down spoiled, but. And the food is. <laughs> the food here is pretty crap. Um, here you can um, definitely come if you want to take a fast yeah yeah if you want to cleanse your body you come here and you don't go near the food <laughs> in, the, in the end there's actually not much to do in this island so if we were to organize a Cuba trip again would we include Kaya La Vista? No. Okay, behind me we have the uh, mural de prehistoria it's 120 metres long and 80 metres high, painted on the Magote dos Hermanos. The idea was born in September 1959 to paint this thing. Apparently Fidel Castro approved of it. I can't believe he approved of something so ridiculous. The guidebook describes this as monumentally psychedelic or horrific. You don't have to figure out that if I had to choose between impressively psychedelic or monumentally horrific, I think the stuff behind me is monumentally horrific. To come into this beautiful valley and be surrounded or be confronted by that is just incredible. I mean, just have a look behind me as we go around. I mean, this place is a beautiful, beautiful valley. And then to swing around to that. Hmm. Mate, that is environmental vandalism. This damn mural from uh, a distance is bad, but the closer you get, it gets worse and worse. How many is Tash at the bar? Well, I've had the Dos Pinos Calados, and I'm waiting for my third one because I'm trying to work out. 
what that's about. Because if you ask me, that's just pollution. <laughs> pollution. Okay. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> How many pina coladas? Number four. <laughs> Number four. This is what she's trying to do to make that shitty mural behind us look better. Is it working? I don't know, but I just realised how much money we spent on alcohol this holiday. Like, you know, I took a vacation this year for summer, and after Geneva, I said, okay, because Geneva was like tragically alcoholic. So, okay, I'm coming to Cuba, and I'm just I'm not going to drink. Well, <laughs> as you can see by the movie, I've always got a drink in my head. So I should have actually said, it's not that I'm not going to drink, it's that I'm not going to not drink. <laughs> oh, crikey. Is the mural any better though? Hang on. One rum? No, we need some more rum. You want some more rum? Tell me when to stop. <laughs> Now, today we're riding on a scooter. I think I'm now thankful that I'm the one driving. Yeah, that's for me, so the mural gets better. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that's for my... Turn it off. <laughs> so you're the... We're now looking for the village of Los Aquitas. And Los Aquitas was founded in the 1940s when a guy convinced the local villagers of the healing powers of water. And the patriarch of the village would know these healing powers and pass it on. Unfortunately, the last patriarch of the village had the indecency to die in the year 2002 without passing any of the knowledge on. So now all these people in the village live believing in the healing powers of water but not knowing how to use them. So we really don't know what we go where we're going. We don't have much of a map, but we're going to see if we can find it anyway. Up here, uh, Porky lunch. She's having a snooze, he's got the right idea. Hot A few hundred million years ago this whole area used to be a few hundred metres higher than it is today. But a series of underground rivers created huge caverns and eventually the ceilings of those caverns fell through just leaving the walls today or what you see of the walls today. What we're actually standing on used to be the roofs of the caverns a few hundred metres higher 100 million years ago. Pretty cool, hey? So this is the second week of our tour of Cuba. We're now in Vinales after spending some time in Maria El Gorda and Cayo La Vista, as well as the first few days we saw in Havana. But this, this Vinales is really cool.
So in the Vinales uh, Valley here, you get a lot of agriculture in the rich soil. We've seen lots of sweet potato, uh, cassava, and a whole bunch of things like that. Plus, there are over 30 varieties of pine tree, which make this an interesting mix of um, tropical and pine forest. And also, a lot of stuff that we don't grow in Australia, like coffee, coffee, uh, coffee bush here. Pick a nice red coffee berry. And the coffee seed that we normally see roasted is there, in the middle. And that is fresh, unroasted coffee. and it tastes nothing like Nescafe. Okay, next stop. So we've arrived at the Grand Caverna the, of St. Thomas, which is a 46 kilometre routing of underground rivers and caves and things like this. Now, if there isn't some sort of secret Cuban military base in there that you're not allowed to see, I'll go he. Let's go have a look, see if we can find it. Now we go searching for the secret yeah. Cuban army oh, headquarters. about to jam the cave. Saroa. Saroa has some wonderful jungles with fantastic plants and life and some places which would have been fantastic to stay at quite some time ago. Not at all.
This Botanic Gardens of Saroa was founded in 1945 by a Spanish coffee merchant in memory of his daughter that loved orchids. There are, they say, 700 varieties of orchids here in this Botanic Gardens. and it's a really pretty sort of area to walk around. Saroa itself was founded in 1896 by a French coffee grower and he was the one who set up the original plantations and town in this area. Pretty, hey? We're in the old coffee plantation of Los Terrazas, started by the French in the 1890s. It used to have a hundred odd slaves. And off in the distance there, you can see Havana. You can see Havana and its pollution. Living in Nacional, have a look at the Nacional. Bye Havana, bye the Nacional Hotel. And uh, we're taking a Chevy which is having a lot of trouble running. So we're at um, the airport in uh, Havana, Cuba. And we're leaving. After spending a uh, Two weeks together, we haven't killed each other. It's been a very enjoyable trip, actually. And uh, I like it. I like it a lot. I think the people are wonderful. Uh, I had no expectations when I came here, so I'm pleasantly surprised. Well, the end of the trip to Cuba. I'm absolutely amazed that Dasha and I didn't kill each other, but we seem to have had fun. Cuba was really interesting. This, a couple of impressions came out very strongly. One was the snail trails that Natasha should explain. The other is some um, people were very friendly. Uh, even when they were trying to con you into buying cigars or something like that, they did it in a very friendly way and you could say no and it wasn't much of a problem. People were out to help. Um, eating in someone's house often got better food than eating in a restaurant. In fact, eating in a restaurant was crap. But generally, it was a good trip. Good people enjoyed ourselves. We saw some wonderful landscape and nature. I have to say, being Australian, we're spoiled when it comes to beaches and tropical islands and things like that, so you wouldn't come here for that. Scuba diving was alright, but generally just experiencing Cuba, it's a, a step back in time in many ways, and it's a very friendly, calm place to be. It's um, well with a holiday, but I know, as best as I could know, that within a few years it'll be destroyed if the um, embargo is lifted, but um, it was a lot of fun. And that's a postcard from Cuba. Ciao! Uh, 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 uh. 
Have you put air in your BCD? <laughs> I was going straight to the bottom. <laughs> you were. <laughs> next one, next one. Okay. And um, then it was um, down to the pigs. <laughs> <laughs> down there. I've got a bit of history for you. Over there. <laughs> okay. This is a lonely planet guide too. Are we ready? What year? <laughs> 1492. <laughs> Give me another mojito. <laughs> El Cepiri. And uh, the United States state. Uh, in 1980. <laughs> yeah, it means it hasn't had time to sit and get dirty. <laughs> Yucky and brown. <laughs> Tell me when to stop. I put it in the glass, Cash, <laughs> not on the bar. Last morning in Cayo La Vista. With me and my two tone head. And it's a world biosphere because of a lot of things that are here. This whole area used to be a few hundred metres higher than it is today. This whole area. It used to be a few hundred metres higher, but during the Cretaceous period 100 million years ago... Okay, so I got my thunder. Pardon me. <laughs> right, start again. Right, this whole area used to be quite a significant few hundred metres higher than... What are you doing? Okay. This whole area... <laughs> I'm not doing anything, it's him. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Take two. Hundred. Right, okay. <laughs> it's gonna go in the outtakes. This whole area. This <laughs> way at the <laughs> ceiling. <laughs> Huge cabins. Don't move the camera so fast. I wonder how you say in Spanish. <laughs> Me voy pa' Mayari, me voy pa' Marcanella, estoy en Guatemala y yo le canto.